Hey everybody, good evening, how y'all doing? Sherelle's here. So, I want y'all to come over to my channel. Come in, I'm welcoming y'all. I'm doing things a little differently. Um, thanks to some of the people I was listening to, I decided to insert myself in a little bit of conversation and try to understand what I really needed to hear because it was just a well-known fact that I, sorry, yeah, I wanted to sit in my room. So it was just a well-known fact that I, um, you know, people from all over the world have different definitions of love and family. And yes, this um, this video might be a little more serious because I'm starting to see proof of that. And I was just um, I was just finished watching an episode called Fatal Vows. And just like all the other crime shows I watch on a daily basis, this was a this was just like that. It was a little more serious. It has a lot to do with family, marriage, and what does it mean to be a part of people, you know, people's marriage. When I said that, I what I mean, when I say that, I mean that if a couple gets married and they have kids of their own outside of their relationship, it becomes a blended family. And I thought that was like, I'm starting to learn that's like one of the most amazing things in the world is to be a part of a blended family and to share your love with other people's as if y'all are blood family. Now that I don't have a problem with. I think that's the most excited thing. That's the most beautiful thing in the world. People all over the world are starting to embrace it a little more. Now when it comes to your parents' marriage. And you're starting to get to know the spouse of your mom. Or the spouse of your dad. Yes, it can get a little more awkward and uncomfortable. Because... You don't know this person from a hole in the wall and you just met them and all of a sudden you heard so many things about your mom and him marrying and you know dating each other, how long they were together for, and you feel like you're being caught off guard, you know, blase blase the whole thing. Now granted the first month or two of knowing your mom, your parents, new spouse. It could be the most challenging because y'all bumping heads, y'all don't know each other, so it's like y'all trying to get to know each other. And it's like they say, it's always that one kid in a group who doesn't want to get along with that parent's spouse. Now, I'm all for making things work and talking it out and trying to get to know the parent a little more you know, before you start assuming the worst about the person. I don't like to prejudge. And I see a lot of kids prejudging their parent spouse. And, you know, it's a little awkward. Like I say, it gets very awkward a whole 100%. You come in, in and out the house every day. And you have to see this person. You have to be around this person. You have to share meals with this person. And that's not something you want and that's not something you was dreaming of or ever thought this was family is but at the same time it's like you have to understand and respect the fact that your parent is dating trying to find love again wants a brand new life and she find, he or she finds the love of their lives you have to adapt to that and more you have to respect it. You don't have to like it, but you have to respect it because this is your parent. This is your parent's life. 
he or she is allowed to start all over again and to find love again. And understanding that fact, I was also seeing brand new things coming up into the world when it comes to future spouses and how they have to adapt and learn how to co-parent your new set of kids, which is your future husband or wife's kids they already have. I, so as I'm watching the show, I noticed that this guy was so deeply in love with this woman and he was love bombing her. Now, I just recently, as of a month ago, learning the word love bomb. I knew what love bomb was back then for years, but I just didn't know the word that, you know, it was love bombing. Because I've been love bomb bombed so many times, and I didn't notice it until somebody brought it to my attention as of last month. Because just like him love bombing this woman, I met somebody on Instagram a while back and he was doing the same thing. Now, granted, I didn't trust him right away because I met him off of social media. I don't know if he's the real deal. Everybody that's me and everybody off of social media claims to be a, this real person. And nine times out of ten, that person might be real but that small percentage you're most likely getting catfish and they say if it's too good to be true then you know there's something wrong with that person you know it's not real and everybody needs to start doing their work so i met this guy who claims he was you know working for the army he was a soldier now, granted, I, like, okay, a lot of people out here will automatically believe if you if you met somebody who was working as a Marine or working as a U.S. Army, you know, soldier, Army Guard, whatever you call it, working for the government. I just put it like that, working for the government. Automatically, you get impressed by that. You be like, oh, okay. Some people think they hit the lottery. Some people think, oh, that's cute. Somebody, you know, from that era, area wants to date me. And all of a sudden, I start feeling a rush of love mixed with excitement, but at the same time, skeptical. Because one, I don't meet people on social media that often. Brand new people's, especially becoming friends with them or becoming an item with them. I never accepted nobody's request of dating them if they come in from a social media such as Facebook, Instagram, things like that. Instantly, I would probably say yes to becoming friends and the more we talk and you know look at each other's pictures and associate each other with other peoples and you know start making conversations and starting get to know each other the better it will be and I was sitting here listening to what this woman was saying how she always wanted to make her life a little more better and a little more challenging because she felt like her life was a little boring because it wasn't enough excitement it wasn't enough like oomph her kids was noticing that she was okay, she was content, but she wasn't happy. And that's what her kids wanted the most, was to be happy. So she, after getting a job, she made friends, she met this lovely guy who was as sweet as can be, who was so appreciative, understanding of her, a sweet old gentleman. And Southern Hospitality was one of his biggest things. He was showing this woman his Southern Hospitality, being so sweet and respectful. Obviously, Chivalry wasn't dead because he was showing her that Chivalry is pretty much alive and well. And he was 
pulling out the door for her whenever she'll come home to her apartment building. He would bring her flowers. He would call her all hours a day and night. He would make sure that she's okay. She got what she needed. The kids got what they needed. The kids was happy and content. And I thought that was one of the sweetest things ever. Now, you can't say a guy like that don't deserve the love and respect that he should get, like he needs. And every woman would sit here and think the same thing. Like, oh, I'm being treated so well like a princess. You know, chivalry is not dead to this guy. Let me show him my gratitude and my appreciation. So granny, I was like, yo, I was treated like that a couple of times as well. And I didn't know how to react. Back then, I was a little naive to it. I was very shocked by certain things. So I had to brush up on my skills on knowing how to appreciate those type of things in life. And knowing how to appreciate a man like that. So I went to family and friends and I was asking them questions about, oh, should I consider this guy, you know, such and such, or should I do this in return, or how should I respond when he tells me this, or he shows me that, or he says this, you know, and he says it to get a reaction. Because I know normally I always say a guy would say anything to get a reaction out of me and do things to get a reaction. So I had to teach myself to not be so gullible and not always accept everything for face value. So I took my time with this guy. I conversated with him. I had a deep, long conversation with him. It goes from 30, 30 minutes to an hour. And it was like that every day for the next couple of weeks. Now, they was like, don't ever give a conversation no more than an hour to a guy throughout your day. Always appear to be a little more busy than he is because it makes him look and think that you do have a life that is, your life is not surrounded by him and surrounded by, oh, always needed a man to be there for you and always needed a man's attention and approval for everything. And I kind of think that it was like, okay, it was somewhere the truth. Let me see what I can do about this guy. So he hit me up one day. And all of our conversations was always a text or email. It was never a phone call. And that was the first red flag I seen. So I started to question him more and more. So more of my questions wasn't being answered. But more of his actions started being shown. And that made me, you know, skeptical even more. Red flags was throwing up in the air like confetti. And I knew there was something wrong. So I questioned him one final time before I blew up at him. What is your deal? You come off as being this flirty, this sincere sweetheart. You're over here spitting rhymes and poems to me. And you swear that this is my first rodeo. So... I don't know what to do. I don't know how to react. I don't know if you're telling the truth or you're lying to me. And I was like, well, you can't lie to me to get in my panties because you don't live this close to me. You don't even live in the United States. So everybody was sitting here telling me the same thing. Be careful. Be careful of who's like talking to you and what they say to you and them trying to invite you somewhere. Or be careful if a guy started showing signs that he's not who he think he is or he's asking you for, you know, certain favors such as money or whatever the case is. So I was like, yeah, you're right. I have to step back a little bit and I waited for him to make his next approach. So my question was, should I believe who this guy say he is? And I asked him, where you from? How old are you? What's your real name? Your date of birth and everything. I had to get down to the degree and I was not going to give up on it. So everybody was sitting here telling me like there's something really fishy about this guy. Be careful. Ask a lot of questions and don't give up on it. So I never gave up on it. So long story short... Six weeks goes by, and we had deep, long conversations that made me think otherwise. And I was falling for this guy hard. And I was like, okay, by the eighth week, we should be able to be good. But we never made it to the eighth week. Why? Because by the seventh week of us knowing each other, 
we got into already three arguments. We got into minor disagreements. And he was starting to act a little more suspect than usual. Now, granted, I supposed to be like, okay, deuces, I'm going out my side. I'm going out my separate ways, but I didn't say that. I just was like, yo, we need to seriously have a sit down conversation because I really want to get into like deep, in, deep into your heart. I want to know everything about you, how you grew up and why you do the things that you do to yourself and to women. He was like, so what, you don't believe me when I say certain things? I said, no, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't believe who you are. I don't believe who you say you are. Your identity, your name, everything. I looked you up. You say you lived in Columbus, Ohio. and No, Cleveland, Ohio. And there was nobody by that name in Cleveland, Ohio. So his name was located down south. It was so many people by that name living in Georgia, Texas, and Atlanta, and South Carolina, North Carolina. And I was like, yo, I could not believe what I was seeing and hearing. So, you know, long story short, in this information, after I Googled him up and I sat here and gave him a chance to come clean, he didn't want to come clean. He didn't want to say nothing. He stuck by his word, and he was really adamant that he was who he said he was. So by sending me so many pictures of him, he thought I was going to be still stupid enough to believe him. And I was like, yo, all that is cute and all. You, you know, sending me music. You saying you love me with the pictures on it. Our pictures merging together and everything. But I still don't believe you. I still want to be honest and say that I feel like you're catfishing me. And you're being really, you know, suspicious. Everything in my power wanted to curse you out and be on my way with it. But because I created a love for you, it pulled me back and made me wait it and wait until I got the answers that I wanted. So a day later after the conversation, he came clean to me about some things and I started to feel a little better. But he stopped coming clean after that situation. So after that, I decided to make the choice to leave. Because I was like, you love bomb me. When you first met me, I was curious as to how did you find me. Because on certain sites, nobody could find me. My name is not on any sites. My name is not even on Google. My name is not on Facebook. All of my nicknames, my middle names, and my screen names is all over the internet. The only person that could find me is my family members that knows me. So when he found me on Instagram, I thought it was kind of fishy and I was wondering how he found me because we had no mutual friends and it wasn't like my page was trending because I was brand new to the page, so to the site and I was still wondering like how the hell did you find me? So. Another red flag goes up, stalker alert, get the hell out the way, like go the other way. And he was like, oh, I just have, I don't know, he, he was like, I just happened to find you. And all of a sudden, my heart just started pounding. And then he started spitting me another set of rhymes, a poem, a poem that was like a mile long. And right then and there, it was enough for me to let him go and blocked him. He found me on an um WhatsApp. He found me on look look out or hangouts. Yeah, he found me on a lot of places and I didn't know how he did it. Like I say, he don't know my full name. He only know my first name because when we first met we introduced ourselves to each other. That was it. So like I say, red flags was crazy. Love bombing Ladies, please, please look out for this because it's like so serious and it's so scary and you don't know what's nuts out here. You don't know what's going on. And by you being associated with some people's, believe it or not, there's people out here who knows them. Some people out here is really fishing out for victims for whatever reason. And people learn the hard way when they are too much in love. And they get stuck in it. And then when it's too late to run the other way, that's when 
you regret it for the rest of your life and your family also is affected by it. And I just wanted to say to the victims out here that waited till it's too late. Some of them ended up dead. Some of them ended up hurt. But it's like the families and friends is the ones that really feel it the most. And I just want to put out there that I am so sorry for your loss. I am so sorry that y'all went through this. And my condolences to the people who lost their lives, to people who like been through things like this that I've been through and more. And I was lucky and blessed by the Lord that I caught on to a lot of things very quick and I moved. You know, I changed my name and passwords on every single thing. I, like I said, I don't put my real name on any social media so people cannot find me. The only way you're going to find me is if we have mutual friends or if I invite you. So that way I won't have to get stalked like these other females did. You know, they was being stalked and hurt. And it really killed me to see that it was too late for them, but it's not too late for me and anybody out here in the future. So before you start accepting peoples that you don't know and accepting poems and love bombs, you really need to Google them up or look them up or question them. And if they get upset and impatient and question you why they are, why they being questioned, it's time for you to hit the bricks, block them and change your name because it's like they're only fishing for victims and they will take it a step further than what they need to so i will see y'all later and that was just my little story of the day i just want to let y'all know and until then bye